Hello everybody, welcome to the live edition of The Sewing Report. I'm Jennifer Moore, helping you discover your love of sewing. And it is time to start the show. So let's get started. I know the topic of today's show is going to be the company Spoonflower. And hold on just a second, I'm gonna get some stuff set up here for the show. So if you are watching, let me know where you're watching from, what city are you in? And also, I've got a question of the day for you. What are you sewing this weekend? What have you been working on? Any special projects? Any frustrations? Let me know. We've got the chat going on and I'm going to pop the chat box up in here so all of you guys can see this momentarily. Anyways, welcome. So we are going to be chatting about buying fabric online today, particularly from a company called Spoonflower. And as noted by the title, it is a company I have never ordered fabric from before. So I wanted to chat with you guys to see what everybody thinks. Have you ordered from this company before? Are you a designer? So we're going to be breaking it down. Hello, Stephanie from West Virginia. And I'm just going to get a couple things rolling in here. So in case you don't know me, I am Jennifer Moore. And I host the show every Sunday at 3 p.m. Or at least I try to. And uh, yeah, so... Let's talk and let me know what you're thinking. What are you working on? So that is the question. I'm just gonna get some stuff set up here. And yeah, so we've upped the production value of the show. So hopefully you can notice here I am and I'm also on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter as at Sewing Report. So if you wanna see what I'm up to in between shows, you can follow me there. But thank you for joining me, especially since I know you have a bunch of other stuff you could be doing but you are here right now. So we're just gonna get some stuff ready for this show. And all right, we've got 16 people watching. We've got Pico Stitch, we've got Penguin and Pear from White UK. Stephanie, she made three dresses, holy cow. We've got Annie from Fredericksburg, Virginia, and we've got Antoinette from Lancaster, Kentucky. And she's been working on some Civil War era undergarments. That sounds pretty complicated. I'm just gonna put that out there. I don't. I don't know how you're doing all that, but you are. And if you, that's pretty interesting. I'm assuming you do some sort of like a, are you involved in the Civil War reenactment scene? And if so, like, how did you get into that? Because I'm, I'm curious. So let me just get some stuff ready over here. I'm just trying to get some stuff set up. But as, as the title denotes, we are going to be talking about spoon flour. So... I've never ordered from this company before, so I thought it was about time that I maybe give it a try. So I have ordered this Spoonflower sample pack. Now I've never ordered like yardage or fat quarters or anything from this company. It's been around for a while and I, in my description box, in the description box below, I've kind of laid out some of my reasons, but I want to talk them out as well. So there's a lot of places to buy fabric online. You can get fabric at the store, but there's a lot of, uh, you know, so Spoonflower is this company. They offer custom printed fabric wallpaper and some other substrates, and uh, you can get anything printed on it. So like if you're a designer, you can get that on it. You can get like, I imagine photos, you know, sort of designs. I, and Spoonflower, to their credit, I have noticed recently more on like Facebook and stuff, they've been they have been um, having project ideas. So like one of them was like for Mother's Day, you could get your grandmother's or your mother's handwritten recipes and like get them on some cotton linen fabric and make um, kitchen towels out of them. So I thought that was a cute idea. They also have a lot of designers that do like pre-printed projects. Like you can maybe get like a teddy bear printed out and the pieces are all printed out in the fabric. So all you have to do is cut them out and sew them. So everything's kind of laid out. They've got, oh, they had a really cute project I posted. I regrammed on Instagram a while back of a like milk carton, like, but it was like a play tent. So you buy the fabric and they, they have a lot of different ways that you can lay out the fabric, like they, to help you lay it out most efficiently. So there's a lot you can do with spoon flour, but, um, confession time, I just have never really been a customer. So have you ordered from spoon flour before? Um, that's what I'm asking. Have you ordered from Spoonflower before? If so, what were your experiences like? And why did you order from Spoonflower? So like, what was it specifically that you needed from Spoonflower that you had to have specifically from there? 
and that's because I, you know, there's so many other places to buy fabric that that's pretty much why I haven't ordered from Spoonflower before is pretty much just because I haven't re I really haven't had like a reason to. So that's pretty much why. But and there's a there's a shot right here of the booklet I got and it has like every single one of the different fabric types, the price, the fiber content and you get like a little example. So just so you can see what you're getting, which I think is a great idea but never used it. And that's kind of what I wanted to find out today was uh, am I like the last person on the planet who has never bought anything from Spoonflower or do a lot of you just not have any experience with this particular company? And that's kind of just, I was curious. Uh, this video is definitely not sponsored by Spoonflower and this is also not intended to be a negative video about Spoonflower. I just don't really have any personal experience with this company. So that's why I'm asking you guys pretty much. So let me know what you think. Um, we've got Stephanie, she says they have some Doctor Who fabric I really want to get from Spoonflower. Just haven't yet. I'm planning on making purses with the material when I've or, or I order the fabric. I do think it's awesome that Spoonflower offers designers the chance to have an open marketplace to sell their designs. Because like if you try to get in as a designer at like a traditional fabric house like Robert Kaufman or Moda or whatnot, you have to have a deal with that company. You know, you can't just make it and sell it. And I do think it's awesome that Spoonflower gives those designers that opportunity to buy, to get custom printed fabric. And now let's, let's get to the price though. Okay, so Penguin Pair, I've never bought from them. I have looked, but seems quite expensive. And that's pretty much my reason for not buying Spoonflower fabric yet, is the prices. Now let me show you the book here. Yes, so we've gotten to the point with the show where I can show you some B-roll that I shot. Check that out. Is that pretty cool or what? I am pretty excited about that. Okay, oh, that is actually the same book. All right, I did not mean to show you that. I wanted to show you the open book. There we go. So that is the book. And you can see they've got like a, they included some wallpaper samples and some chiffon and then some poly crepe. And you can see all of like they have all kinds of polyester cotton canvas so they do have a very wide range of products you can order which i think is great um and i was trying to look at some reviews for the company to see what i could find i saw some positive and negative reviews and the negative review i saw was basically the fabric um the different prints the different designs don't print out the same on different substrates so like on cotton it may look different than it did on polyester and the same person also had a complaint. Her fabric, when she ordered the design, she was trying to make like a frozen costume of Anna. And she, I guess there was another des a designer that specifically had a design that looked like Anna's costume. But I saw her photos. She got it printed out. I forgot what substrate she used, but the design did not look very vibrant on this particular fabric. And she did mention that she had a bit of a difficult time with customer service. So I don't really know what their customer service is like. So if you can speak to that, feel free to comment and let everybody know. Um, all right, so we've got Paula. Yes, I've ordered, just didn't realize the print I ordered was 45 inches wide, but the print going with the 45 inch width, not the yard length. So a lot of piecing together for baby bed bumper pads. That does seem like a little bit of headache and it does seem like you do need to know what you're doing when you're ordering from them. I did see they've got on their blog like some tips for ordering just to make sure that your layout is correct. And it does seem like a little bit of a potential headache as far as like you trying to figure out, hey, I need to make sure this is totally right. Otherwise, my order is going to be kind of jacked up. So, I mean, it does seem like there are some some kinks and some a bit of a learning curve with trying to order from the company especially because they, I noticed they have something called like fill a yard where you can take a yard of fabric and put like anything on it. But it, again, that does seem like it's a little more, like it takes a little more of a calculating um, some steps. So that seems like a lot of work to me. So, but really the prices were the things that for me is just the, the kind of the deal breaker right now. Um, some of the prices like the cotton the Kona cotton is like 18 or 19 dollars a yard the polyester fabrics are over 20 dollars a yard like for polyester knit and to me that seems a little crazy because you can get polyester knit is really cheap on like fabric.com or joann's or anywhere else polyester is typically very inexpensive and you know you can get really good deals on it 
So that's why I was like, wow, that seems really expensive for polyester. And that, you know, and I understand they do have a lot of sales, especially on like the fat quarter sales. But when I'm shopping for particularly garment fabric, I'm not looking for a fat quarter. I'm usually looking for several yards of it. Um, and again, they do have sales, but even with the sales, the prices do seem a little bit cost prohibitive for a lot of people, myself included. So anyways, I want to know what you think. So and let me show you some more video. All right, so we've got... I also took some b-roll of the book. So here we are, we're gonna be flipping through and, and showing some of the, the different fabrics you can get, which is cool. Yes, I know, I really like using this open broadcast software. I can do a lot more with this show and hopefully, uh, hopefully the quality is better for you all, uh, hopefully. So that is awesome. But yeah, so we're just chatting about Spoonflower and I've got this booklet. Um, but yeah, so that's the thing for me. I, I think I'm sure that the prices for Spoonflower are great for custom printed fabric, but compared to just your regular traditional fabric prints, it's a lot more expensive and I personally don't have a reason to purchase custom designed fabric. There has not been a print that I specifically needed and I've always been in the situation where it, you know, if I can't find exactly what I need, something else could do and I am very cost I am very cost conscious so usually if I'm looking for a print I'm just looking for a cute print it doesn't have to specifically be you know corgi dogs with Santa Claus hats in the background or something like it can usually I usually have a little bit of leeway on what I can use and I will typically go for the best deal I can find whoever's having a sale what's the best price and I shop around a, I shop around a lot for fabric sales I'm someone who really does that and uh, that's just something, you know, I, I like to get the lowest price I can for the, you know, again, the lowest price for the best quality I can afford. So if I see a good sale, I usually jump on it and that's how I buy my fabric. And, um, and if I am looking for a specific print, it's usually from a more commercial manufacturer. Like I'm looking for a Carolyn Freelander print or I'm looking for a cotton and steel print. But it's usually not something that's like custom designed in Spoonflower. I just haven't had that experience. So if you are a frequent Spoonflower customer, let me know what are your reasons for ordering from Spoonflower versus another company. And I just kind of want to know what you, you know, is there something I'm missing? Is there something about Spoonflower that is special that I should know about? Let me know because I'm curious and that's really why I wanted to have today's show topic be this is because I don't know. So I figured it would be worth a conversation, especially because, you know, custom everything is kind of becoming in style. There was an app for everything, custom blended foundation, custom lipstick, custom underwear, you know, there's all kinds of stuff out there. And I think what's the surface Spoonflower is offering is great, especially if you are a designer. But as a customer, I just, you know, haven't really had a reason to shop there before. So that's kind of what I'm asking you guys. So let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, so there's that. I know it's uh, this is a bit of a random topic. Um, and I do kind of want to talk about my experiences with different fabric companies. So maybe in future shows, we can chat about, you know, like maybe I can try out a new, some fa fabric online company that I've never tried before and share what I went through. Um, but I am really glad that I got this booklet because I do think it's cool to at least see and be able to feel and see what the fabrics look like with the prints on them. I mean, the quality seems good to me. It seems decent, but I just personally, I can't get over how expensive, I just really can't get over how expensive the polyester fabric is. Like for the jersey that's uh, 96 polyester, 4% spandex, it's $26 a yard. For performance pick, which is like, 100% polyester, it's $20 a yard. Minky is $27 a yard. Now, keep in mind, these are all like 55 to 60 inch, you know, widths, which is cool. But again, that still just seems out to me like just very expensive for custom. Again, I'm sure for custom fabric, it's a good price. But for me, not needing custom fabric, it's, it's expensive. So they've got satin polyester for $18 a yard. Um, you know, so again, I don't know if there's something I'm missing. 
Uh, the cotton twill, like if there was a really good sale on the cotton, that seems not too bad. Like the basic cotton ultra fabric is $17.50 a yard. Cotton sateen ultra, $27 a yard. And uh, Kona cotton ultra is $19 a yard. So again, in cotton poplin, $20 a yard. Now the widths of these do vary. Some of them are... Uh, some of them are 42 inches wide and also I, from what I understand there's a border around the whole fabric so not all of the fabric is usable and cuttable from what I understand. Um, all right so we've got a couple more comments. Um, all right let's read some of your comments. All right um, Pico Stitch says they say on their website that black doesn't come out very pigmented on their website. I have seen reviews complaining that black comes out a bit faded would avoid predominantly black fabrics. Got Stephanie. Price-wise, I guess it's the fact that you can get a very specific design, unique design, very creative, etc. Still very expensive, but does have that uniqueness going for it. And Trinette, Annie J, how much did you typically charge for a period costume? Okay, that's that's an interesting question. I don't know how much a period costume goes for. Paula says, while Ginger Software is coming out with a custom fabric printing service for their patterns, see their website for details. The software won't take the URL. Okay, got it, got it. Um, so that sounds interesting and maybe a competitor for Spoonflower. And I wonder if there is more competition. Does this mean the prices would, you know, be a little more competitive? I don't know. We've got Cindy saying hello from West Virginia. We've got Sequoia Luigi. Spoonflower has better pricing than print all over me, in my opinion. And I'm not familiar with print all over me, but uh, again, I, I know there, these companies seem to be popping up more and more. Like everyone wants to be like the Uber of something. So I don't know. We've got uh, Iwa Minky, depending on color, costs $8 per meter in the UK. And Paula White says, yes, it is true. From my experience about the border around the print was not usable. So, I mean, there's, I think there's good and bad things about ordering from Spoonflower. But for me, I think the, the reason I haven't really ordered from Spoonflower is definitely, is definitely the price. Um, because, like, if I'm looking for a print, like, again, so, like, this print here is, like, chiffon. No, don't get me wrong. It is definitely cute, but I bet I could find a similar print from like a regular, just your regular old, you know, fabric online site, and it would probably be definitely less expensive. Again, this pot, this is the poly crepe. This is $23 a yard. Now, again, they do seem cool and they sell wallpaper too. So they included a few wallpaper swatches. And the wallpaper, I'm not, I don't really buy wallpaper a lot, but the, oh, and they have gift wrap too. So the gift wrap is $15 a roll. I think the gift wrap actually would be, if I was going to order something from Spoonflower, it would probably be more like the gift wrap. This is $15 a roll. That's 26 inches by six feet. Now the gift wrap I can more see a use for, and $15 for a roll doesn't seem insanely crazy for custom printed, um, for custom printed, Gift wrap, the wallpaper is $5 a foot for 24 inch wide rolls. So 24 inches by a foot is $5 and then you pay another $5 for every other foot. And the woven wallpaper, which is definitely thicker, is $7.50 per foot. So again, I don't buy a lot of wallpaper, so I don't know if that's a really awesome price or a really bad price. All right, we've got uh, Ewa says, prints are not easy to design, but need to fit purpose. And that's, that's a good point. And, uh, okay, so print as, I think, uh, Sequoia, this is the print all over me. You have to pay a subscription before you can even design just fabric, and then you have to pay for the fabric. I did see on Spoonflower's website that they offer a discount for designers to buy their own fabric, which is great. And then I think you get another, and also you can sell, you get a commission if you sell your fabrics, if your fabric designs to other people. Which is, which is very cool and it's definitely a good way for you if you're a designer to uh, create some revenue, which I think is awesome. But I also think there's something, your design has to be unique enough where someone is specifically wanting that. Um, like if I'm just looking for floral fabric, I can find floral fabric anywhere. If I'm looking for cat fabric, there's even a lot of, like it seems like there's, a, there's so many choices out there for fabric anyways, that that's pretty much why I haven't ordered from Spoonflower before. So anyways, let me know if, I'm, if you think I'm totally off or if I'm missing something about Spoonflower or if you agree. I, that's just pretty much what I wanted to chat about was just, you know, that I haven't ordered from this company before. But I'm glad I ordered the sample pack just to see what it's all about. I mean, they do have a lot of, 
stuff. They have a lot of different types of fabric you can get, which I think is great. And if I was designing something custom, I think that would be awesome. Like maybe I would want fabric with my face all over it. Could you do that? I don't know how the pigmentation would be. I do have a lot of black hair, so maybe not so well. But maybe I took some really cool pictures of flowers and wanted to have that as a fabric. I mean, it's good to have that option. I just personally have not had a project that required that type of uh, fabric or anything real custom. So all right, we've got a couple more comments. Um, uh, Sequoia, I designed my own fabric because I'm going to replicate a dress I saw and couldn't find the fabric I needed. Okay, that's a good point. You know, if you if there's something you want that's you want it completely the same as what you saw, I think that's I think that's a good reason to buy from them. Uh, when you when I do sublimation printing, I design small fabric, and I want to know also if you have um, like how often do you want like a like like I know cosplayers or somebody that's making a specific costume, you want it to be as accurate as possible. Um, all right, we've got Pico Stitch. You have to buy a swatch of each of your prints for $5 before it will be sold, sold on Spoonflower. So there is a bit of an upfront cost for designers. And if you are a designer for Spoonflower, feel free to chime in. If you work for Spoonflower or if you have, let me know what you think. Um, oh, and uh, one other thing to mention, a couple other things to mention, which I think is great. Um, this fabric is printed in the United States. So I think that's, again, one reason why the cost is higher. And also they... On the website it says they use eco-friendly processes so i know both of those factors will definitely lead to a higher price and you know in my opinion from what i've learned about fast fashion i think it is worth the price to have goods made responsibly and also made ethically and eco-friendly so i think that's a great thing but again the cheapskate in me still just can't do it so i don't know what my problem is um, should I try Spoonflower? I don't know. And if so, what kind of project would I make with it that would require like a custom printed fabric? Should I get fabric with my cat all over it? I'm, and by the way, I am interested in getting that Adobe Creative Suite because I do think it could do a lot of cool things and maybe I could try to learn some design stuff. Maybe I could design my own Gato Cat fabric and have like a thousand of my cats on it and just make like, I don't know, like a couch out of it or something. I have no idea. I do think it's cool that you, if you have something in your mind, you can create it, but I just haven't had that need. So that's why I haven't ordered from this company before. So maybe I'm just crazy. I don't, I don't know. Um, that's a real possibility. Oh, and I do want to share a couple things with you. So this week I have been uh, doing a lot. So I'm on vacation this whole next week and I'm gonna be doing a lot of projects, sewing report projects, and uh, I have been doing a lot of, a lot of hand sewing. So my hand is pretty sore right now, I'm not gonna lie, I still have to finish up some things with this project I'm working on, but I think it's gonna make a really cool video, so definitely look for that over the next couple weeks. I posted some sneak peeks on Instagram and Snapchat of the project, it does involve the sewing report logo, so I'm really excited about this project. Also, if you may have noticed, I made a pin cushion a few weeks ago that looked like the YouTube play button. Because, I mean, this is a YouTube show, so I figured we should pay an homage to YouTube. And the project also involves that to some degree. So I hope you are intrigued because I'm really excited about this, this project. And I cannot wait to show it to you. But hopefully within a few weeks. I'm hoping to actually get the project done today and then shoot some pictures and some b-roll of the project. And I also had another really great video idea that I'm gonna be shooting this week. I, I wanna shoot a lot of videos this week because I've had so many ideas. So definitely stay tuned. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, definitely subscribe and turn on your bell notifications because I think the videos I've got coming up over the next couple months are gonna be pretty cool. So I'm excited about those. I've got a couple more comments. Uh, so, okay. So Cindy says that's great that it's printed in the US, but why does that have to mean it's higher? Cindy, it's labor costs. It's because the US workforce, you know, again, our dollar is worth more than other countries. And because they have to pay people to, you know, work at this company and because it's made in the US, that is why it's going to be more expensive. I'm sure they probably have someone running these machines, you know, quality control, that sort of thing. So anything that's made in the United States, it's hard to get that cost as cheap as it is overseas. 
So, and if you haven't seen the documentary, um, there's been a couple, um, there's been a, yeah, there was a documentary, oh, what was it called? I can't remember the name of it, but, but it's on Netflix and it's about fast fashion and textiles. Oh, why can't I? I think it was called, let me look it up real quick. A documentary fashion. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, why? All right, I'm looking it up right now. I'm hoping, to, all right, if I can get to a website that like, if I can get to a website that actually like gives me what I'm looking for. All right, that's not very helpful. But anyway, oh, the true, was it the true cost? And it was basically, um, yeah, I think it's called The True Cost. And it's a great documentary about the fashion industry and about textiles and just the impact that textiles have on our world. Very interesting stuff. And uh, I, I definitely, the more I'm learning about this stuff, the more I'm really glad I make my own clothes and the more conscious I'm becoming of at least trying to buy what I can that's made ethically and made in a responsible way. Um, so that's something that I just, the more I know about it, the more I want to do it. Obviously we're not, you can't, I think it's probably impossible to avoid buying everything from overseas because there's always going to be something. But you know what, I can try to do a little part and, and do what I can. All right, we've got a couple more comments. Uh, Annie says uh, she specializes in petticoats, skirts, and blouses, all drawstring. Basic design that I got from a period pattern. My roommate was a member of a Vermont period reenactor group. That's really awesome. Um, Ewa says self-designing prints are good if you like specific designs you cannot buy. Like me, I love Paisley and no long... Uh, a lot of shops don't carry them, but then you go to Poland where houses have massive, uh, I guess, choices. Um, okay, the software I'm using is called Open... If you're asking me what I'm using for the show, it's called Open Broadcast Software, and it is free. And I can't believe I didn't learn it before because I feel like the quality of the show has gone up like 10 times, especially because I'm using an actual microphone now instead of just the iPod. All right, we've got uh, Penguin and Pear. I watched that documentary about a week ago. It's really informative and definitely worth a watch. Yes, it is awesome. And you know what? And and I think the thing is, the thing that, and also John Oliver on his show last week tonight on HBO, I know, real legit, uh, but he had a segment about a year ago about fast fashion that was very eye-opening, and I really hope that it helped um, raise awareness about what's going on. But the gist of his segment was basically that a lot of these clothing manufacturers that go to overseas uh, textile houses it's very difficult for them to oversee whether they're using ethical labor practices. And that really kind of breaks my heart. I don't want, I really don't want to buy anything made by someone that is, uh, you know, maybe working under exploitive, exploitive circumstances or made by children. I don't want that. So the good thing about making your own clothes is that you know where it's coming from. So that's the thing that, um, that's the thing that really gets me is just that I just want to know where my clothes, I just want to know where everything's coming from. All right, we've got a uh, hi from LA. Saw a YouTuber use a website like this to make stretchy pants. So if you want a very specific print without getting in trouble with infringement laws, that would be a good resource. Good point. It was says labor, machine checks, health assessment, chemical storage, safety transport, and storage and warehouses. So, okay, that sounds, I don't know much about that, but that sounds interesting. But anyways, so yeah, so we're just talking about Spoonflower. Um, if you're just joining us, thank you very much. And if you have experience ordering from Spoonflower, um, please share. Please feel free to share. And by the way, I'm very excited because now that we've got the comment box up, you can see the comments after the live stream is over without me doing that like real hokey copying and paste thing in the comments. So that is great. So, uh, yes, yeah, so Open Broadcast, well, you should definitely check out Open Broadcast Software. And I just found a couple quick tutorials, also on YouTube, about using it. It's really pretty easy. And I did a few, I did do a, several hours of testing just to make sure that uh, things would be on the up and up. But uh, everything seems pretty okay. So I haven't had any, I haven't had any major issues, which is, which is good. So I'm, I'm definitely down with that. So yeah, so this is what we are doing. But uh, let me know if, uh, let me know what you think. And we will, uh, yeah. And also, oh, and by the way, 
today. So in case you don't know, I've been working with this company called Pink Castle Fabrics. They're online and they sell fabric and they also sell sewing, Janome sewing machines. They're a licensed Janome dealer. But I've been working with them and they had me try out this Janome 1000 CPX cover stitch machine. It's been awesome, but we had a promotion with Pink Castle Fabrics and Sewing Report. We teamed up. And your last day to take advantage of this is tomorrow, but down in the description box, I've linked to their website. And if you buy any sewing machine over $500 from Pink Castle Fabrics, you can get a $50 gift card if you tell Pink Castle Fabrics that Sewing Report sent you. So if you're looking for a sewing machine and you wanna buy it online, but you also want some decent customer service, uh, Pink Castle Fabrics definitely offers really quality customer service. I know the owners, Brenda and Jason, myself, they're very nice, good people, and they will take care of you. So if you are looking for Janome sewing machine, definitely check them out. They are definitely willing to talk to you on the phone, via email, uh, talk about your needs, and they are they offer really great machines. I have uh, two Janome machines now, and they're both wonderful. I'm really not brand specific, but the Janome machines I have are both good quality machines. So definitely check Pink Castle Fabrics out if you are looking. And you want to order, you want the convenience of ordering online, but you also want to be able to talk to a real person. They will take care of you and make sure that you are satisfied. So yes, yeah, so this offer lasts, it expires on August 1st. So definitely make sure to, uh, if you're interested, get to them over the next day or so. And they have lots of Janome machines and they'll ship it right to you. And if you, again, if you tell them Sewing Report sent you and you get a machine over, most, most machines are included in this, they said, over $500, they will give you a $50 gift card and you can use it to get like get an extra sewing machine foot or maybe some fabric or something else to get you started on your sewing journey. So that's my PSA for today, I know. So this has been really fun. And uh, next week, so next week I'm thinking about do, having the topic, uh, have it sort of be an update. Uh, this year I've decided not to buy any clothes for the entire year, all of 2017. So next week I'm thinking about doing sort of an update. I can share with you guys how it's going and also what my thoughts are so far on choosing to do this. So if that sounds like something that interests you, let me know because uh, that's what I'm thinking about doing next week. If you hate the idea, let me know. If you love it, also let me know so that I, you know, because I want these show topics to be stuff that you guys actually want to hear about or actually care about instead of being real boring. All right, we've got a couple more comments. Uh, Elsa, love your sewing live streams every Sunday. Thank you so much. And Iwa says, uh, Janome has fantastic customer service in Europe. They have the best reviews. And by the way, Janome also has that really cute Hello. They have several Hello Kitty sewing machines. I'm a big HK girl, so uh, I think that would be awesome. So yeah, Pico Stitch says that topic sounds fun. And I would agree. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun with this. So next week I will share, you know, what I've made so far and also, um, you know, if I'm going to continue doing this. And I've also been compiling all the footage. And at the end of the year, I think I'm going to do like sort of a look back on everything I've made this year clothing wise. And you know, um, oh, Paula wants to know if I've sewn a bra yet. I have not, Paula. Um, I have not, okay, don't, I hope this doesn't make me sound gross. I have not purchased any bras this year. I have quite a few to get. And that's the thing, like, I have a lot of clothes, ready to wear clothes already. So I'm not going to throw them away or anything. I'm going to keep wearing them, but... Uh, this year, I just really wanted to focus on not buying clothing. And it's been a lot of fun so far. It's been very educational for me, and I've been picking up new skills. I would like to make a bra. Um, I am curious, but I have not gotten around to it yet. I do have a lot of projects that I'm thinking about doing, and I would like to make a bra. I did make some underwear, and I actually have a video that I've shot but not edited where I just show, show the process of making some things like underwear and sweatshirts. Um, they're not really tutorials, but I just more wanted it to be more of an artistic uh, video just showing the making process, particularly so that people that are unfamiliar with sewing might be able to just get a, get a little bit of a glimpse into what it's all about. But I'm really excited about the project I've got coming up, not this week, but probably the week after. This week's video is going to be my pattern review of uh, that sleeveless top I was wearing last week, the blue one, M7601. So I did a bit of a review and kind of walked uh, through what I would do differently for next time. And that's going to be this Thursday's video. So I'm trying to plan ahead, you guys. I swear 
I've got my calendar ready and uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying this new software. I think it looks great and I enjoy it. So, okay, we've got Sequoia. I plan to make a bra since I can't seem to find any that fit me perfectly. And that's the thing, yeah, I, I have trouble with that too. I uh, don't really have any boobs, so it, you know, I have trouble um, finding anything that, that fits well. Um, I mean, I guess I could try to go to like the preteen section and get like a training bra, I don't know. Um, but I also don't really want to look like a 14 year old girl. So that might, I don't know, so we will, we will see. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things I want to sew. Mostly I've done a few dresses, I've done some shirts. Um, I've done, I think I did a skirt. I do want to do another skirt, uh, maybe more in like a, like some more like professional. I want to make some more uh, office ready clothing. So that is definitely on the agenda. And uh, Paula says, they're watching you and others sewing their own wardrobes. I thought more about this. Definitely interested in more info. Paula, I think you should go for it. You will, don't look back. Just, just do it, girl. Just do it. And a Pico Stitch, I'll hold off cutting out fabric for the M7601 until your review cuts out. A Pico Stitch, um, the only thing I will give you a little of a bit of a preview, um, if you're using a fabric that's cotton or heavier than that, um, I, in hindsight, I wish I had not cut out a facing. I wish I had done bias binding. I think um, I would have had some fewer headaches. Um, with this particular pattern, I just did find that there was a lot of bulk under the arm because of the facing. Uh, the pattern calls for an interfaced facing. I, one, don't think you need the interfacing, and two, think you could definitely get away with doing bias binding instead of a facing. Um, I don't really see a reason why you need to have the facing, um, and it kind of just flopped around. So that is the one, the big thing that I would definitely do differently for next time. I think the pattern is great, though. I made view A, and I would definitely, I'm definitely going to make it again in a different fabric, but I just need to, you know, I don't know, I just... I've got so many things I want to sew in so little time, and I have managed to make a lot of gifts in between all of this, the clothing. I've made a lot of baby gifts, because um, lots of people are having babies, and uh, there's a few other gifts that I need to make. Um, but the next pro the project I'm working right now is actually a quilting project, but it's a little, it's a little out of the ordinary. So it's not just your typical quilt, but I have been doing a lot, a lot more hand sewing than I want to do. So I think after this, I might uh, chill on the hand sewing. Oh, the video software is called Open Broadcast Software. And you can just basically Google it, and I think it pops up. And it's totally free, and that's what I'm using right now to do this show. And it's awesome. You can insert, like, video clips. You can insert pictures. You can do what I'm doing. You can put, like, little, you can have little things pop up. Like, I'll, here, I'll show you. I can do, uh... And actually, I can show you my computer screen so you can see what I'm, you can actually see what I'm looking at right now. Hold on one second. So this is my computer screen and um, this little, the little gray box, the dark box, that is the open broadcasting software. And this is actually, I'm checking out the, I've got a couple monitors up just so I can see what's happening and make sure everything's cool. So I've got that going on and what else do we have? And like, so you can do that, which is awesome. Um, again, you can, let me put myself back in there. Where did you go? Okay, so now, and all you have to do is like, so I'm just dragging this up here. And then you see, this is the pre, the box on the left is preview and the box on the right is what's actually being live streamed. So when you hit transition, see it pop back to me. Isn't that awesome? Like, it's very cool. I feel like I'm in a control room. And as a TV producer, I'm really geeking out over this because I think it's really, really neat. So again, I can do that. I can put up the, uh, like I can put up the chat box again. So you can see the preview screen and then uh, the screen chats back. And I can do my name. So the, this, when you see like, when you see like um, someone's name or like a title at the bottom, that's, um, in TV terms, it's either called a super or like a CG or a lower third. There's a few different terminologies for it. I personally like super. That's what we're used to, but it's usually like, then, you know, it's like when someone says like Bob Smith witnessed to fire, that's, that's their super. Um, so yeah, so yes, I'm obviously I'm Jennifer at Sewing Report. Um, and yeah, if you want to see what I'm up to in between, um, you can definitely, uh, uh, I usually post, I try to post on Instagram stories when I can. Um, Snapchat, I haven't had a lot of time for. I love Snapchat and I don't know why I haven't, I just haven't had a lot of time for it lately. So it's just, hasn't been really happening. 
um and also um yes yeah, so james right now is outside mowing the, he was mowing the lawn i don't know what he's doing now um but if you would like to see what he's up to see who the guy i'm married to he uh, has a channel more approved we do it together occasionally but mostly now it's just him and he has been making videos lately about his gardening his indoor gardening projects and this week we learned that you can take random stuff like lentils or like peas or like or um other kinds of random like legumes and you could actually make your own sprouts and microgreens out of stuff you buy at the store so he's got some lentils going and they're sprouting and then in a few days you can eat them and i guess sprouts and microgreens are a lot healthier for you than just regular like lettuce or traditional greens so i'm excited to try out these microgreens and try to get a little bit healthier i think that would be pretty pretty cool so anyways let me see if there's any more comments all right we've got uh um angel all over says have you checked out some of the japanese bras that are out there many of the japanese brands make longer line bras for women with smaller under the bus like 30 and 28 inch under the bus you know maybe i should check that out since i am asian i uh, that would make sense that an asian brand would cater towards a uh, small busted women like myself so that'd be pretty cool um i should probably and in fact i didn't even know anything about korean cosmetics until a couple years ago and my mind was blown i was like oh my gosh there's stuff made for people with my skin tone and with my issues and i've noticed there's also like uh, different brands that are starting to cater toward asian people like there's a sunglass brand called covery uh, c-o-v-r-y and they make um i have trouble with glasses because they always slip down i have like no um i have no bridge on my nose basically so if I, and I, I'm supposed to wear glasses all the time, but I don't. So no, fun fact, but glasses always just kind of ride down. But this brand says they make ones for higher bridges and also so that the sunglasses don't touch your cheeks. So I'm kind of curious to try out some stuff that's actually meant for Asian people because I, I feel like I've been, uh, I feel like I, sometimes I feel like I, uh, I struggle with some of these products that are just made for Caucasian people. All right, we've got, uh, yeah, evil man who make, uh, yes, my husband did make his own underwear. Um, so yeah, if it, well, let me know if you guys have any more thoughts about spoon flour or about anything else we've been talking about in this, uh, this podcast, or this isn't a podcast, this live show. I don't know what I'm saying now, and I apologize. I'm a little bit tired today. I didn't sleep very well at all last night, so I'm a little, I don't know. I think I, I did not, I slept on my back wrong, and it just feels weird, and I only got like five hours of sleep, so here we are though, and uh, after this, I'm gonna continue hand sewing and hope that my hand uh, does not like fall off or something. That would be great. But anyways, uh, if you guys don't have any more comments, I will sign off for this week and definitely stay tuned for next week because we'll be talking about me not buying any clothes this year. And it has been going well, I have not cheated at all. And um, yeah, so we'll talk a lot more about that next week, but I hope you guys all have a great Sunday and I'm going to leave you with my new sewing report. Hold on a second. All right, if I can get this together over here, my new sewing report outro.